Alright guys, so today we're going to talk about um, how the turbine on your turbocharger affects the horsepower output of your vehicle. So um, we basically did a test on this on the dyno, back-to-back uh, -back comparison. Um, so some of you may be asking what is AR ratio. Um, it is the area, it stands for area divided by the radius. Basically, it's the cross-sectional area of the turbo divided by the radius of that area, uh, wherever it lies. Um, and um, basically, um, when you're talking turbos, a smaller AR usually is going to make uh, a faster spool. And a larger AR is going to make more top-end power. So the car that we did our test on was my dad's 74 Chevy Nova. Uh, he uses the car for no prep racing, so we basically size the turbos such that um, they will make uh, a good amount of uh, top end power, but spool fast mostly is the thing. It has a uh, turbo 400 transmission, four nine inch rear, 364 rear gears, mega squirt gold box, gen four six liter. Um, I'm not gonna go through the engine specs again. Um, but they're there if you want to read them. So the turbos are GT3582s. They're eBay Chinese turbos. Um, yes, that's that's the legit price there. That's $129. Um, they're very cheap, but they work very well. Um, they're cast turbos. Um, so they're cast uh, 61, 81 and a half. Uh, inducer, exducer, 57 trim, turbine is a 68-62 with an 84 trim, so they're basically 62-62 turbos, they're rated for between 4 and 600 horsepower um, on engines that displace between 2 and 3 liters, um, so we figured 3 plus 3 is 6, you know, it should work well on a 6 liter. They are water and oil cooled. Um, we are not using the water cooling portion of the turbo because it's not a road race car. It's only going to be run a couple minutes at a time. It's not a street car. Um, and they shipped, that's wrong, uh, they shipped with 0.63 AR housing. So that's what we ran it up with in the first test. So then we got to work uh, swapping over the turbine housing. Um, we did it on the car and uh, you can see the, there's a big difference. Um, this is a 1.06 AR housing that we went to and this is the 0.63 AR. Very, very big difference. Um, you can see where the AR uh, increase comes from.
So, something I wanted to go through quick um, before we show the power results. Um, there's this really neat tool that um, Borg Warner uh, made. It's basically a turbo calculator. Now, obviously, these aren't um, Borg Warner turbos, and they're not even based on Borg Warner turbos, they're based on Garrett turbos. Um, but it's still a interesting tool and uh, I kind of wanted to see what the real world uh, application of this tool, how well it lines up. So I have already gone through and filled everything in here, twin turbo, E85, um, and then it has this really neat tool down here for the turbine selector. So this is based on the uh, inducer at the large diameter on the turbine. So basically you have to I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. Um, so basically you have to, um, there's these, um, well, hang on, let me show you this first. So there's these up and down arrows up here. And you Basically, you have to hit these up and down arrows. This is your expansion rate, and that moves the dot here. So I've moved all the dots to, um, they don't have the exact size turbine that what we're using, but I just basically put it on a line that was sort of close. And we can see that in the calculated outputs that we have, um, it sh is calculating that we should have around 30 pounds of back pressure with a 0 0.63 uh, 68 millimeter turbine. So now if we mess with this again and move these dots, so I'm only gonna move the top two um, just because that's really the only ones we care about. But if we move these to an area where it's close to like a 1.06, um, give me a second here. Lots of clicking. It has to catch up to you. So this tool is saying, this tool is saying that we should, after um, we change the turbine housing, we should have around 25.8 pounds of back pressure. So another output of this tool is obviously the horsepower. So it's saying that the engine horsepower should be 100 or 1131 horsepower and it should take 70 horsepower to drive each turbo. Um, now I think that's each turbo. I don't think that's both turbos combined. So um, if we open up our calculator, and we do 1131 minus 70 minus 70 times 0.85 for drivetrain losses. So it's saying we should make 842 horsepower to the ground with the uh, 1.06 AR housings. So if we go back now we can look at our power results so here were the power results so dashed line is the 0.6 uh, or sorry the point 1.06 AR housing results and the solid lines are the 0.63 so you can see that um, our peak number was 795 with the 1.06 and 771 with the 0.63 so we had a net 24 horsepower gain at the same boost so both runs were at 17 pounds of boost now you may look down lower in the power curve and say hey you lost power down low well um, I don't have a closed loop uh, controller it, well it has a closed loop controller I was not using it I was running the controller in open loop so you'll notice that the boost is significantly lower uh, in the lower RPMs. So that is what accounts for the lower power. I think it would have made more power everywhere, but um, 
I don't have a closed loop controller on the car, uh, or I do, but it, anyways, <laughs> forget that. Um, so yeah, I think that's what accounted for the power loss down here, but you can still see the peaks up where it's 17. Um, it's significantly higher. Um, and also we were plotting back pressure. So exhaust manifold pressure. So we, um, have a, uh, manifold pressure with the 0.63 was a peak of 31 pounds. So if you remember from the Vorg Warner match bot, um, it said we should have back pressure of, I think it was like 29.9. .9, so pretty close. And then with the 1.06, we had a peak back pressure of 26.5. And the match bot said we should have had like a 25.8. So it's actually pretty darn close. Um, so very neat results. Um, overall, I'm pretty impressed. I, I don't think there is much lag uh, difference between the two. Um, it, I mean, it comes on super fast, um, as you can hear in the videos. I mean, we hit boost cut on the one, uh, I had boost cut set low for, you know, dumb me on the full, first pull, we uh, had boost cut set to like 18 pounds. Um, and I mean, it was like, it was less than a second from me stepping on the pedal to hitting boost cut. In fact, I'll play the video. So yeah, that it's just it's insane. Um so this thing spools insanely fast. Um and I don't think the larger housings really affected that a whole lot just because the turbos are sized to make as much horsepower as we need. Um, it's, you know, designed for no prep, so we want the boost to come on as fast as possible and come back, you know, as fast as possible. So I'm going to cut it off there. Um, I have one more uh, result video from the dyno session that I'd like to uh, go through, and that was the fuel line. So we upgraded the fuel line from a half inch uh, hard uh, stainless steel uh, hard line um, to uh, a three quarter inch stainless hard line. And we did not change the pump configuration at all. So same exact pumps um, going from a half inch hard line to a three quarter inch hard line and we basically saw um, a dramatic increase in fuel flow and it might surprise you just how much more fuel flow we were able to get um, so I'll leave that for the next video um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one uh, I think it was pretty uh, a pretty neat test so uh, catch you guys in the next one